Okay, welcome to Digital Tanka Workshop. Uh, my name is Ben Christian. In Tibetan, my name is Jampe Dorje. And uh, our first thing I wanted to say today is to apologize for not having uh, made a, a, movie, a video for so long. It's um, been you know, months and months since I've posted something on YouTube. I kind of felt like I'd run out of things to say, but then, uh, you know, recently over the last couple of months, I, I have received a few uh, new subscribers. And so I felt um, inspired to uh, you know, at least create something uh, explaining an old work, if not do a, you know, a fresh tutorial series. So if there's something you'd like, uh, something you'd, uh, you know, want to learn or you'd like to see me do, um, you know, send me an email, let me know, and I'll see if I can make um, a tutorial for you. Uh, like I said, I've sort of run out of ideas. I feel like I've covered most of the things that I need to cover for someone to be able to paint digitally. But uh, if there's something you'd like to see, then uh, then for sure, drop me an email and uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so let's talk about this, uh, this image today. This is uh, a, an image that I completed a couple of months ago. It's about the Gulugpa uh, lineage of Mahamudra. And at the top here we see Lord Manjushri, uh, then Lama Tsongkhapa, His Holiness the First Panchen Lama, and then all the way down the bottom here we see uh, the, the sort of the main metaphor of this tanka, which is um, a vase pouring water into water, which in the teachings of Mahamudra is uh, a metaphor for the you know the meditative state of mind during that perception uh, of union or contact with Mahamudra or or um, or emptiness. Um, this tanka came about, <coughs> excuse me, because um, I had to paint, or I wanted to paint, a picture of uh, Vajrabhairava, Yamantaka, and um, and for to do that picture, I needed to have Lord Manjushri at the top, and then I wanted to have the the lineages, uh, sorry, the Lama lineages, Lamas of the lineage, <laughs> in the top section as well, and so that. Uh, the lamas I wanted specifically was Lama Tsongkhapa and his Holiness the First Panchen Lama. So I had to paint those three beings uh, in order to do that tanka. And I thought, well, you know, since I've created those beings, why don't I create uh, a separate tanka, which isn't that much more work um, that is dedicated to a very special and you know specific meditational subject, which is Mahamudra, and very uh, you know a practice that's very uh, dear to my own heart. Uh, so let's take a look at what I've done here to create this picture. Uh, as I said, this is wasn't uh, this is like uh, what I'd call a secondary image. It's something that I create along the way um, because I've done sort of 90% of the work anyway to get it there. So it doesn't take that much more work to create an image. So a lot of what I've done here is compiling landscape elements um, that I've used in previous tankers. And where when we come across that, I'll point that out to you. Uh, and you'll be able to see how I could throw a, 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 this sort of landscape together re relatively quickly without having to do much new work. So uh, if we turn off the, the top layer here and we look at the whole tanka, the first thing, we'll go from the, the bottom to the top, and the first thing is the the background layer. So this is the, you know, the, the really the foundation of the tanka. It defines the the, the gradient in the sky, uh, and then the landscape, the basic coloration of the la landscape. There's some earth sort of cliff element here. Uh, this pink section is some foreground rock. Uh, there's obviously the water here, and then like a, a stream or a water course running through the middle. And then you can see these sort of blotchy patches here are just sort of sections where I've wanted to add color variation within this uh, you know, foreground landscape element. Okay, so this is my bottom layer. This is everything now sits on top of this and informs this layer. Um, this layer can be seen all the way through the tanker. Okay, so next layer, if we turn on, so you can see here, I've just turned on this little blotch here, and that's just defining a little area that I wanted to be a slightly different color. Next layer is just adding some very some color variation, and so what I've done here is I've, I've brushed in some cool tones in these heavily shaded areas, which will become the lower section of this cliff face, and I've done it with a brush. I think it's like a sponge brush or something that just sort of adds adds some randomized texture as you paint, and that's to try and break up, um, you know, that super fuzzy airbrushed digital look, which you know is, is difficult to get rid of. 
um, and so that's now I've, I've you know decided on colors now I'm just starting to break up all those sections and you'll see uh, there's a few different techniques I use for that one of them is to use a textured brush uh, next layer okay so this is now the uh, just defining the, the crest of any little ridges within the tanker so you can see here I've just added uh, some you know yellow browned off grass sections to the top of these little areas of landscape and that helps to define the you know the the folds and and the contours of the of the landscape and add some depth so, so you know some of it's a little you know quite subtle and some of it is very very strong so you can see they're starting to build some depth in the center of the tanker here uh, next layer so this is just adding more color variation um, <clears throat> Probably worthwhile pointing out that, um, that the, the, these color variations are done almost at the end of the picture painting process. So, you know, even though we're going through them in like an order, this isn't the order that I paint in. What I would have if I was painting is I'd have, uh, you know, I'd have this And what I'd be doing is I'd be deciding, well, you know, these tones off to the side need to be cooler. And so then I'll be adding a layer like that to so making those color variations based on the most important elements, which are the, you know, the central, the central figure and the minor figures. And so, yeah, just worthwhile pointing that out because it's not done, uh, it's not as though it's painted in the order I'm presenting it today. All these little sort of subtle ch uh, choices are, you know, informed, you know, by, by the look of the tanker in the final stages. Okay, so here's another layer. This one now is defining uh, what appears to be some dark areas of green. So here I've just got some, some darker areas here coming in, adding some depth, some color variation. Now here, this layer is interesting. Um, if I turn off everything else, let's have a look at this. So this is just a, com a composite I made um, based on a photograph. So this is one photograph, and it's really just a photograph I took when I was driving down the mountains um, here at Mount Hotham one day, and there was a lot of smoke in the air. And all of this is just a photograph of this mountain peak with some smoke and all I've done is you can see I've just cloned it multiple times and then merged it here into a central thing but it's essentially just the same thing flipped and repeated so just one tiny little element sort of gave birth to this whole sort of rocky receding atmospheric landscape and uh, all the way through to these very very subtle uses of it through to the back here and what it does in the final picture is if I add uh, Lord Manjushri to the top you'll see that it just adds that uh, you know that I wasn't interested in the central part because that's obscured by the, the main figure, but I just wanted this sort of receding, very, very misty landscape and it had to be very soft, very subtle uh, because this picture is about Mahamudra, so it needs to be soft and subtle and very um, reflective of the state of mind that we're trying to achieve as a meditator. Okay, so if I turn that on off, you can see how that informs the landscape in general. And it's also, I've used it down the bottom because it just adds, it's a way of adding very quick reasonably subtle color variation to your landscape without having to paint it in um, you need to add sort of the if you just have flat areas like this it always looks pretty pretty bad in my opinion so this is a very very easy way of adding some variation uh, so no you know go out take some photos and use them blur them distort them make them very very low opacity put them in, in you know composite them into your picture in a soft light blend mode or something like that and see what effect it has and take it all the way down to as subtle as you can don't make it too obvious that's just adding a bit more detail to the a bit more depth I guess I wanted some more a bit more foreground detail here and as it recedes into the background uh, what's that? this is a little layer down the bottom here this is just defining a point of in interest within the, the waterscape and all it is, I've just borrowed this from an, uh, a previous tanker, I've just blurred it, inverted it so that it's white rather than dark and, um, and just add it there 
just so the eye has some detail to rest upon in this kind of fairly bland section of the, the water here. Next layer, okay, so this is adding now um, this earth structure in that in you know the traditional Tibetan style of rendering you know an earth embankment and you can see it's just starting to appear up here as well in the river and all that is is a soft light blend mode with black I think and this layer is okay so this is just you can see that's just subtly changing just very subtle and again, this layer was made right at the last couple of hours of painting this tanker. It just needed that little change in colour temperature, so it's made this area cooler. Uh, just needed that at the end. Uh, this layer here, layer 117, is just adding more depth. So uh, somewhere at the end of the painting process, I've, I've decided that this uh, you know, section of earth embankment needs to have more... Um, uh, which you, if you're in photography you might call micro contrast or something like that it needs to be needs essentially so it needs to pop a little bit more so I've just added a set and another soft light blend mode of exactly the same thing above it and that makes it deeper or you could change it to the overlay blend mode but that may do something a little bit funny to your colors so um, I try to stick to the soft light blend mode the, the overlay blend mode um, can make your colors oversaturated and then you have to adjust your color layer underneath okay so this is mist so this is um, adding some atmosphere to the picture this is foreground mist and it's one of the the you know if your landscape is not looking the way you want it to look uh, a very easy way of bringing some depth and to cover up any mistakes or you know poorly rendered areas in your landscape is to add some mist So three shortcuts to making your landscape painting look better are to add texture, mist, or noise. Those things are added very, very quickly, very, very easily, and they can make a huge difference if they're done with the correct sensitivity. So yeah, at some point I've decided that this, you know, I wanted to make the landscape look better than it was looking in, so I'll add a little bit of mist. Also helps with that sort of Mahamudra style vibe I'm looking for. Uh, this is now mist that's occurring in the water. So just breaking up that hard transition where it goes from water to earth. Uh, you, you don't want, you know, you want that to be nice and soft because, it, you know, in reality the, the water would be transparent at that point and it would be blending quite uh, beautifully into the rock surface. And so I've just introduced that layer to help aid that. Now I've added some spray. So this is... Um, uh, the airbrush set to a that's the modern airbrush not the usual airbrush that you paint with but the actual airbrush brush um, with a very granular setting on it and uh, I use that just to add some some spray detail if you just paint with soft fuzzy airbrush white it's, it's not going to look right it needs to have some variation to it and you'll see at the very last process um, I, I add noise to the picture which adds, blends this granularity here seamlessly with this very non-granular smooth section. Okay, and then it, that's fringing here, it's on top of the water here, here, here. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now this is the rock, the, sorry, the rendering of the landscape as a whole. And so this is just a soft light blend mode and that's now introducing the, the actual rock structure, like the, the more micro rock structure. Uh, you can see it clearly here. And that's pretty much all the dimension I want to add to this, this landscape. Now uh, we're going to look at adding some cloud. So this is cloud I've borrowed from a previous tanker of mine. So I've just brought this in. I've scaled it, warped it, changed it, however it needs to look. Um, and then, you know, just started compositing bits to add 
the compositional elements that I need. So if I add Lord Manjushri at the top here, uh, you can see how um, those those three cloud elements help to provide um, this sort of very beautiful asymmetrical aspect to the landscape. Okay, next layer is okay. So here is. The vase layer. So this is just everything that composes the vase. And again, I've painted. I think I've painted this from scratch. This section here, but the vase and the lotus supporting it, and these leaves I've again borrowed from a previous tanka. So uh, if we look at what's making that up, you can see there's some leaves there. There's the body of the vase. There's the watercolor. There's the main leaf section. There's the lotus. And there's some sort of additional elements of the vase and then there's some shading and that's it okay next we have his um, highness the first painting llama and so he is created uh, in a separate uh, image and brought into this composited into this image as a smart object but within this picture what i've done is i've added some cloud which has been sort of heavily blurred through different layers. So this is, uh, let me have a look. That, that is something like the actual layer. And what I've done is I've duplicated it. I've blurred it behind and I've blurred it in front. And that sort of added some depth and softness to that because it needs to be very soft in this picture. It doesn't want to be a you know a very hard cloud outline in this area. It needs to be blending in and contributing to this general mistiness and fogginess at the bottom of the picture. Okay, now so here's Lama Tsongkhapa. That's his cloud structure. Um, so here in this layer, I'm trying to add some depth to the cloud. So that can be achieved by by just you know in the in the deepest folds the deepest creases of either, you know whether it be cloud or robes or landscape you can just add little touches of dark color and that will help to give you good color variation and also to um what would you say add some depth which isn't you know uniform it's it's kind of a subtle use of depth because it's not everywhere right it's only in those deepest points uh, and if you made that pink like a dark pink it you know, you would have lost your opportunity to paint a little bit of colour variation, which is always very um, something you really fight against with digital painting. It's, things can often look very monochromatic uh, uh, because because we're not we may not be trained as an actual painter, so it's not like we're mixing paints or there's any sort of natural variation occurring on the brush. It's exactly what you want it to be, and so you, you need to add variation where. Where, wherever you can to try and get it to look as though it's been painted by hand. Uh, there's Lamont on Carper again. This was a smart object brought in and composited. Uh, now working towards the top. That's just some line work for the sun and moon. There's the actual sun and moon. So they're just you know very simple, which is the way I like to paint them. Uh, and that's the finished tanker. So all of that just built up with you know lots of little layers and lots of attention to subtlety and bringing together many 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 subtle elements to create you know something that's very um, you know detailed and um, you know yet still soft. Um, not you know, I don't think it's overly rendered. It's not uh, it doesn't rely too heavily on an outline. It has sort of a you know it's it has a nice hand-painted feel to it um, and all those things are achieved as, as I've been saying through like these multiple little layers of subtlety um, so the last trick which is the uh, the two stages at the end are to add texture and noise to make the picture look homogenous so one of the areas where you lack homogeny is um, so remember we, we looked at this area here so here we have this kind of spray going into a very very soft fuzzy thing and so it looks you know they don't talk the same language uh, if I add noise which is what I'm doing here uh, it's just a three percent Gaussian noise 
then that helps to create this you know homogeny between those two sections and it helps to break up these very flat areas of color and when I learned digital tongue uh, sorry digital painting um, the, the person I was learning from at the time was very strong on what uh, he referred to as color value and so he would you know refer to these areas as having very poor color va value um, you know if I zoom in here you'd consider this to have reasonably poor color value um, because it doesn't have any any real life to it it's just a very very you know uh, rigid gradient from here to here but when we add um, some noise then it helps to bring value to that area and to to bring bring the qualities of a hand painted image to your digital uh, tanka. Lastly it's the um, texture so there's the texture layer so you can see that you can see the texture layer most predominantly in the landscape and that helps to give the appearance of it being painted on on silk in natural media and again brings areas of different focus together um, you'll see here there's a uh, I think they're called layer masks and um, what that's doing is it's just defining a different strength of texture um, between landscape and the central figures so you can see uh, hopefully you can see if we zoom in here here this layer mask is defining an area of heavier texture here and right when we get to the edge of the the halo here it moves into a more subtle use of texture and what that does is it prevents this heavy sort of canvasy texture um, from you know disfiguring the face of the deity for example so you wouldn't want to have like a heavy texture there on Lord Manjushri's face or on the skin or any of these sort of subtle areas where the, the eye wants to travel to so you need to keep it out of those areas it still needs to be there as a kind of a subtle thing because it will be there in a, in a hand painted image um, but it needs to be in this particularly in these very flat areas it needs to be quite strong here um, particularly when printed uh, because it's one thing to look at it closely on a screen like this but it's another thing for this to be you know 20 inches high on a wall um, it needs to be present at that scale and that viewing distance okay so that's the picture I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you like my work and um, you'd like to support me please take a look at my patreon page uh, I do a lot of um, work throughout the year and I post it on patreon and uh, over there we could there's an arrangement where you can support me uh, financially in exchange for high resolution copies of my work so uh, if you're interested in the work i do why i do the work uh, please click on the link in the description below and you'll see uh, you know a link to my patreon page and there you'll find all the information about my work and uh, and uh, the, the very large project that i have which is to paint uh, the 11 yogas of naropa or the the entire practice of Vajrayogini uh, over the next 15 or so years so uh, once again thank you for finding this video and if you got this far to the end then you must be interested in uh, digital tank of painting to some degree so again if there's anything I can do to help you uh, please drop me an email and and let me know okay take care